Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Curtis. Ladies and gentlemen, all who are here, I bid you welcome. And for this great, great honor that's been presented to me, to present to you the most outstanding in the world today. My friends, the electric Roger Moore. My friends, he said, Lou, I'll do anything you want. But no more television. I've spent seven years on The Saint, and I don't want to do any more. And when R Roger Moore says something, he means it. I said, Roger, I'm in trouble. I've committed a series of 22 episodes with Tony Curtis and you, a series called The Persuaders. He said, Lou, I'm not going to do any more television. I said, just a moment, Roger. I opened my drawer and I pulled out a substantial check. I said, Roger, this is something to start with. And without the flicker of an eyelid, he said, when do I start? <laughs> well, we played it tongue in cheek. As I play most heroes tongue in cheek, you know, because I, I really don't see myself as a hero, uh, although I play them as so a, I, I play them as so, a, you know, it's all a joke. And I think you have to sort of make the audience feel that, hey, listen, this is, it's all right to laugh. Daniel, I cannot tell you how disappointed I am in us. Us? Well, wait a minute, you didn't give her at 100,000 big ones. <laughs> when we drank champagne, it was champagne, it wasn't ginger ale, and so I was rather inclined to drink too much and eat too much. Lou Gray did once say that Roger and Tony weren't as friendly off screen as they were on, but that it seems wasn't the case. Tony had, uh, at the beginning, had not done television, and uh, I think he had a a sort of a feeling that, well, this was a step down in the world from being an enormous movie star. His ideas gradually changed on that. And we had quite a lot of fun bouncing off one another. But I think Lou sort of thought, well, yes, I will say that because that makes it more attractive that they, they would then look to see what was going on between yeah. them. As with the saints, Roger directed a couple of episodes of The Persuaders, which were very much of their time. But <laughs> all the cloth was mine, and it was made up by my then tailor, Cyril Castle. Yes, I would say, you know, I'd like uh, this sort of look and that look. And, and if, if you remember back in the early, the beginning of the 70s, late 60s, sort of... Men were rather extravagant in their dress. You know, we had the kipper ties and mm. big knots, or else a scarf around the neck, uh, flare trousers. <laughs> we were pretty leery. The lightweight nature of the persuaders and the fact that it looked so much fun to make. Mm -hmm. 